Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to freely assemble and petition the government for a redress of their grievances. It's the First Amendment. It's all that matters. Welcome to a special edition of the Rick Castellano Show. A little toast. Delicious. Excuse me a second. There's two people at toast. Tonight's episode's called The Giant Killer in Me. Folks. It's been 30 years. <laughs> no, I don't know if I'm that old. 30 years since the 81 Olympia. I'm talking about the giant killer. My hero. Castellano doesn't have many, but he's one of them. Dan, the giant killer Padilla. 1981. He started something that in those days, never heard of. Ripped. Muscle mass, huge. The size of who? Well, I'll give you a little history about this gentleman. Not just a bodybuilder, not just a professional bodybuilder. This gentleman trained with the best. Of course, I went to California back then. <laughs> I don't know if I was wrong back then, but it, I went back to California, world gym, climbed to the top of the stairs, and who do I see? The giant killer, training legs against none other than Mr. Olympia himself, Franco Colombo. And who was Mr. Olympia's training partner? Excuse me a second, I'll show you. <laughs> and who, who does the giant killer know personally? Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I got to meet him as the governor. <laughs> and you know, it's personalized to Rick, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, folks, Castellano has a few stories to tell you. Do I know the governor? Have I met Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, yeah, oh, I waved high in the inner back. No, I got to met, meet him three or four times. Now, would he know Castellano if he came up to him on the street? Absolutely not. But I, I got a friend that I appear with frequently, the giant killer Dan Padilla. And every single time I was with Danny, I got treated with respect. And one time in Ohio at the Arnold Classic, a couple years ago, we'll get to that in the future with the Arnold Classic, I wanted this picture autographed because... Nobody gets Arnold Schwarzenegger's picture autographed. I mean, at least not to mail or something like that. So I said, Dan, is there any chance you'll get me an autograph from Arnold? Well, no problem. Are you sure? Well, we're at the Arnold Classic. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is in a roped-off area with all VIPs. Folks, there wasn't one bodybuilder back there. Nobody I knew. All old German guys smoking big fat cigars and they don't want to know nothing and nobody got to bother them except I said, Dan, we forgot to get Arnold's autograph. Don't worry about it, I'll get it. I hear yeah, but don't don't bother him. Don't, don't bother him. He's way back. There's all kinds of security. I don't want I got it. So he goes to the security. This is when he's the governor, mind you. California. They say, uh, sorry, nobody sees Mr. Schwarzenegger. Well tell him Arnold Danny's here. All right, see Arnold, them guys, security, go over and talk to him. See Danny and say, send him. Danny starts to go, and he goes, come on, come on, come on. I go, no, 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 it's okay, just go this. I want the poster sign. You're coming. Security stops me. Yeah, buddy, just, just him. And he goes, no, 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 tell Arnold I want to take my buddy. Anyway, Arnold looks, gives a signal, and I come over there, and I got my poster signed. You know what, folks? 
this isn't the first time I met him, but it's probably the first time he thought he met me. I met him back in the 80s. I was a little infant or something like that. And uh, when he first was training and, and dating Maria Shriver, <laughs> oh, I know something happened. <laughs> he was romancing the babies and everybody. They had, they had only, he left to another story. But anyways, I met him back when he was dating Maria Shriver, exercising at World Gym. And I only used to be a prankster. Danny was training at the gym at the time. Franco Colombo at the time, pound for pound, one of the strongest men in the world. He competed in the world's strongest men competition where he was carrying a refrigerator on his back for distance and his, his knee snapped. Which brings us to the story. Well, we're going to tell it like it is, the way it should be, because it's the 30th anniversary of... The 1981 Mr. Olympia and Castellano's got footage. We're going to see in the future. We're going to get down to this. I got a documentary on the way. But tonight, it's just a little glimpse, just a little memory of my hero. Yeah. Anyway, 1981, Mr. Olympia. Dan, the giant killer Padilla said, you know what? Arnold one came back last year before the Conan movie and won. I might as well come back and win too. Trained harder than he's ever trained in his life. Folks, go look it up on the internet. Dan the Giant Killer Padilla. Everybody says he should have won the contest. It was fixed. You know why? Arnold's training partner paid back for Franco because Franco was true blue and loyal, except <laughs> something happened on the way to the forum. Dan the Giant Pad Killer Padilla got in shape and didn't know what to do. Franco, Franco, don't go in, don't go in, don't go in. You're going to embarrass yourself. Danny Padilla, is, I've never seen anybody get in shape like this. He was ripped to the bone, and he had the muscle mass of a 300-pound guy. Side by side, he was unmatchable. His, his cuts were so deep. You think Castellano's being just saying it because he's a buddy? Go look. Look on the websites. Look at all the websites. The biggest controversy in bodybuilding history. Probably any history. It's one of the biggest controversies. Anyway, some of the judges said, we had, couldn't vote for Danny at first place because he was too ripped. <laughs> too ripped. He was too cut. His face was too drawn. You were too cut. Uh, others said that Danny, I wasn't ready. It was a little flat, but the pictures don't lie. I got muscle books. I got bodybuilding books. I got books where even Arnold himself said, if Dan Padilla, because Arnold used to be a host of many contests, and he said in his own words, if Dan Padilla ever comes in shape, there's nobody that could beat him. Even you, Arnold? Yes, even me. You know what? In 1981, Dan the Giant Killer Padilla, he came in shape. I want you folks to go back, check up on your computers, and if not, I got some footage. <laughs> Who's this good looking guy he's training with? <laughs> Me! Oh, one other thing before, before we get to the uh, exclusive footage of the giant killer and his training, looking spectacular, I might add. One other person I just happened to meet. When I hung out with the giant killer, I met many of people. Believe me, I used all the connections I could with them. Uh, well, without further ado, Miss Olympia herself. That's right, folks, Miss Olympia. She said, uh, uh, Dan, is this a friend of yours? Yeah, I go, you mind autographing my poster? She goes, Autograph it? She said on the poster for me. It's priceless. And that's a true story. That was in Atlanta. Anyway, I traveled around the country with Dan Padilla. Did I use him? Well, you know what? He was a friend. And uh, I don't think he'd say I used him. But believe me, he knew a lot of people, <laughs> and Castellano was right there with his arm around them, too. <laughs> the giant killer. Castellano, could you have met all these great people by yourself, just on your own merits? Absolutely not. Only because I knew the giant killer, Dan Padilla. And you know what? The producer's trying to rush me along here. I just remember the most important story of it. I got, I got to get this in. A few years back, Castellano wasn't a bad football player. At the time, he just got done tearing this bicep. 
surgically repaired at the time. It was something they didn't used to do. Now, a couple years later, this bicep I tore for the second time. I don't know, I was wrestling, fighting, playing pinochle or something. But anyways, then the doctor told me, I, I had, in high school, I had major knee surgery on my right knee in high school football. Doctor told me I needed knee surgery on my left knee. So now, beat up, this arm was just recovering from a bicep surgery. I just tore the muscle in this arm, and I needed knee surgery. And I seen Jan Dan at the gym. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't take another surgery. I'm just beat up, playing when I'm hurt, and I'm, I'm not supposed to be playing, and just keep on playing. I don't know. Now my knee's shot, and uh, I was still fast after I hurt my knee, but now with this, another, this new knee surgery, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, and I needed bicep surgery. I don't know what he goes. Dan looked at me and said, mind you, this is a smart guy. He said, screw it. What? Can I say that, producer? Sure. <laughs> well, sure. just in case you don't, I'll try something else. He said, forget the surgery. You're not getting operated on Monday. What do you mean? I got to. I guess my knee needs operated. You've had too many surgeries. Come train with me. Well, I, it was an honor to train with him. I would, my whole life, I would love to train with this guy. But I'm thinking, I got to have surgery. The doctor told me I got to have surgery on my knee on Monday. You know, the doctors are right. Anyway, I decided I didn't want to have another surgery. I'm sick and tired of surgeries. Come Monday morning, me and Dan walked into the Sampson's, where I was barred for years. I don't know what happened. I'm a trainer now, folks. Great job. But I was barred. All heads turned. First person to see Danny, Bob Chicarillo. You know, like, just joking, like a friendly gesture, but I, I took it as criticism. He was being a little rough on Danny. Not, not that Danny can't handle himself, but I kissed him. I was a little temper. I might have shouted a couple words. Anyway, we end up training there. Things settled down. Me and Bobby are best friends nowadays. But uh, me and the giant killer training, people were laughing. What is this guy doing training with this guy? Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I still have a couple. I used to drink diet ginger ale in those days. I used to drink, drink, drink. And Danny put a stop to that. How? I come in the morning to go train with him. He noticed that I'd been drinking the night before. He made me puke, train until I puked. And I was getting good results. I wanted to survive. I wanted to heal so bad that I didn't want to take a chance of missing out to get my body healthy again because I always wanted to play sports. So I got sick of throwing up. So I started training hard, and I started saving my late nights till Saturday night, one night a week. You know what? I got in phenomenal shape, like you'll see in the video in the next couple of minutes. And the giant killer? Well, let me tell you. Let me add to the story. I thought, I'm going to train as hard as I can because Dan, all of a sudden, he was out of shape. He was sick and tired of getting screwed in contest so he decided you know he'd take a little high hatus so we're both back to the gym making a comeback you might say and i'm thinking you know what i want to get in shape so bad i'm gonna do everything he does i'm gonna follow every step he does if he trains hard and pulls weight i'm gonna train hard and pull weight if he does 30 reps i'm gonna do 30 reps you know what it worked for a couple weeks i go wow look at i'm getting in great shape but look i'm all of a sudden by about the fourth week <laughs> he turned into a pro and I was just your amateur bodybuilder true story folks I tried but there's just no this guy's got I don't know if the genes or his training mentality but he was strong in every exercise so did we train hard we got up in the morning we went and ate breakfast at the restaurant we trained one body part we went to eat lunch then we trained another body part that's how we prepared for a contest and that's why he looks the way he does so the giant killer in me I gotta toast you Castellano's in shape and he's healthy. And guess what, folks? Who do you think still trains Castellano to this day? He's not training with me, but he trains me every morning. You're watching the Rick Castellano Show. Tonight's episode, The Giant Killer and Me. This is the you, Danny boy. Oh, Danny boy. Folks, 
a Rick Castellano exclusive. Footage never before aired anywhere. Now, the giant killer in me, unedited. Folks, I don't train with Dan anymore. He trains me every morning. You want to know more about Dan Bedella? Go to danbedella.com. Or if you'd like to be trained by Dan, Bed the giant killer Bedella, 585 503 1427. Give him a call. Folks, athletes, young, old, retired from Kodak, he knows it all. And believe me, anytime I have a health problem, He's got the modern equipment. He could take care of you. Believe me, I call him before I call my doctor. DanPadilla.com, 503-1427. Area code 585, of course. You're watching the Rick Castellano Show. And oh, by the way, Danny. Dan's dying ginger ale. Take it out of me. Ha <laughs> ha, we're back. <laughs> Delicious, folks. To end, to end the last chapter, I got to end it properly. Quote of the week. Um, there's absolutely no question. This is about revenge. What makes no sense is that the four of us are good at tr and true Republicans. Absolutely not, Mister Alisi. If you were true Republicans, you guys would have voted against gay marriage. I don't want to talk about the other suspects from Buffalo here or there. I'm talking about you because you sent me the flyer. And because you're from Rochester. And because of our Now let's go to the head of the class. Benedict. Who? Benedict Obama. Castellano, he's the president of the United States. You should... You know, you should respect the office. I do, until he was in it. You mean to tell me as soon as he was voted president, you were, no, that's not true. I gave him a chance. I listened. I liked what he had to say at the Democratic convention a few years back, but he has been talking out of both sides of his mouth. And now, he's talking with his microphone on that he don't know about. What are you saying, Bennett? What are you saying, Castellano? Bennett, excuse me, I'm slurring. Um, what are you saying, Castellano? Well, what I'm saying is, like his vice president, Biden, that likes to swear and everything on with his microphone, doesn't realize when it's on, talking to the Russian prime minister today in Korea. Talking to the Russian prime minister. He don't know his microphone he's on. Uh, what are you going to do about the missile, missile defense stuff? Was, you know, we're really, really against it. And, you, you know, you're going to put it up and you're going to protect countries like the Czech Republic that you promised to. But I know you came back with us and you told them you're not going to protect them anymore. You're going to pull that back. But we're really against it. What are you going to do? Well, well listen, old, the buddy, old communist, old buddy, old chum. Uh, 
I can't do anything about it right now because I'm in the middle of an election. But pretty soon after the election, I'll be more flexible. I'll be able to help our cause, the Communist Network, because I believe in everything you say. And uh, Saudi King, uh, Russian, b- b- tell your buddy Vladimir. Folks, I'm not just saying sarcastic things. Listen to it. His mic was on. He told, tell Mr. Putin, 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 whatever. I'll be glad to help him because I don't care about America. I only care about power and my wife's big butt. What? Okay. So, President, you're calling him Benedict Obama. Why? Well, it's the anniversary of the health care bill that he passed that he's not really talking about. You know, it's in the Supreme Court right now. Why is he talking about it? Well, he had the CBO go over his figures when he first introduced it. And he got some people on board because it was going to be under a trillion dollars. Folks, fact check me. You think I'm going to be mean? I'm going to tell you the truth. It's going to be under one trillion dollars. Well, guess what, folks? It's a year later. It's going to be two trillion. So half of the people wouldn't have voted if they didn't know it was going to cost that much. Lie. Two. If you do this, if I pass it, insurance premiums are going to go down. They increased 40% since this was started. 40%. It's not even in action yet, most of it. 40%. Lie number two. Louisiana Purchase, Nebraska Corn, Costco's, whatever you want to call them. Look at one, Louisiana. Vote for the bill. I'll give your state a free ride. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to. We'll get you. you guys don't have to worry about it. exemptions. Now, this other goof that says he's uh, uh, against abortions. Well, Mr. President, if you could promise us that this is, has nothing to do with abortions, this is Nebraska. Uh, we'll be on board. We'll, yeah, it's got nothing to do with abortions. No, abortions aren't covered there. Well, you jumped on board and guess what? Sandra flucked, whatever her name is, fluke, dope, puked. I despise you, you liar. You're just like the president. You, you're you like an attorney. And the Bible says all attorneys should be thrown into the ocean. <laughs> Let's start throwing. Anyway, that's not all attorneys, just the liberal ones. Anyway, you said it have nothing to do with abortion. What did we find out? Oh, we're making a big deal. Oh, the, the Catholic Church has got to, even if they hire people, they got to pay for the birth control. Folks, it's not just birth control. It's the day after pill or the morning after pill. So, hey, guess what? I made a mistake last night. I slept with a leprechaun. <laughs> okay, I don't want to have the baby. What do I do? Uh, morning after pill. That's killing a baby. Um, Abortions. Guess what? It covers abortions, this new bill. This new thing that Obama promised. He promised. He said, look at me. Vote this bill, and it doesn't cover abortions. You liar. You Satan worshiper. You evil insect. Do I say all these things? Only because they're true. (laughs) 